to get attend such important events. But we did pay our last respect as such and uh, deliver the message on behalf of Parliament to, to the family of Honorable Mola. <clears throat> now, linked with that, <clears throat> I, I, I made a submission to, to Parliament this morning uh, that we, we propose to undertake an oversight visit to, to Mpumalanga next week as, as this team. I have strategically identified visiting uh, James Moroka, which is under administration. And during the last session, we did receive a presentation on James Moroka in respect of uh, uh, what is happening in that municipality. But I've also identified Govan Becky municipality. There are issues of infrastructure development in that municipality. But it is a municipality where Honorable Pindile Mola uh, was staying. It was her constituency. And I think it is quite proper that as part of our visit as a committee, we, we should make the arrangements to also visit uh, the family to once more as colleagues, as people who work with her, to, to also go and, and visit the family and pass our our regards in that in that respect. We will be, if Parliament approves, uh, we would know by the end of tomorrow uh, the, the submission that I made. We are going to visit Mpumalanga next week uh, and do our our constituency work in, in those two municipalities. We might add another municipalities, one, one municipality, depending on how uh, the program is going to be and what approvals we are going to get from uh, from Parliament on the basis of our application to do uh, uh, oversight visit uh, to that to to those but to that particular province. Having said that, let me go to straight to the to the agenda of the day. I have not received any apologies uh, except the apology from the acting HOD of the Department of Cocta. In, uh, in in the Eastern Cape. But I have the pleasure to indicate that the Honorable MEC, uh, Honorable Nkata is here together with the team, uh, the legal advisor, as well as the director responsible for for local government administration in the, in the province. I think they are well equipped and well capable to, to can give us the information that we need as, as a committee. We <clears throat> are doing Makana local municipality. As, as, as you know, the presentation was forwarded to, to you, but I had a discussion with, with the MEC to indicate that okay. uh, he also needs to brief the committee uh, on the court, on the court matter that has profound implications okay. for for local government and, and one and section 139. Uh, as we are aware, uh, there was a court matter uh, before the High Court in, in, in the Eastern Cape. It has serious ramifications for, for all of us. I'm, I'm told that the department appealed the matter in subjudicate, but I think it is quite uh, in order and quite proper that uh, the MEC needs to brief us about about the matter, what it entails, what was the matter all about, uh, how did it go to court, and how far it is. And if it is an appealable matter, we can engage with the matter in that sense. But I think it is quite proper that uh, we need to be taken on board uh, as this committee, as parliament, so that we know what is happening in that municipality and the reason why the situation had to unfold in the way that uh, it has unfolded. Uh, I'm sure the MEC will will take us on board and brief the, this committee about that particular matter. As I indicated, the matter before us is straightforward. It is about uh, Makana local municipality uh, that we are going to deal with. We have circulated the, the proposed uh, committee program that is going to unfold 
until the end of the end of September. It's a very detailed, comprehensive uh, program that we are going to unfold until uh, uh, end of, at the end of September. I'm going to request that uh, anyone who, whose child is is around there must uh, mute the mic so that uh, we are not uh, disrupted as we move forward with the work of this committee. Having said that, uh, let me give over to to the MEC uh, together uh, with the team uh, to take us through the presentation. And thereafter, as a, as a norm, we are going to rigorously and comprehensively engage with the presentation from from the MEC, Honorable MEC. Over to you, Honorable MEC. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Honorable uh, uh, Chair. And uh, greetings to you, Honorable Chair, and the honorable members of the committee, and uh, the support staff of the committee. And uh, uh, thanks uh, for giving us this opportunity to uh, report to the committee. And uh, yes, Honorable Chair, I'll take the, the, the guidance uh, you, you just provided now. And um, I don't know we'll be guided by the committee because uh, I was I was thinking uh, that uh, we'll do the presentation and uh, then the legal uh, 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 advisor of the department, uh, legal officer, will then do the the, the, the a brief presentation, uh, you know, adding to to this one on the Magana issue. But uh, we also requested the mayor, honourable chair. Uh, of the municipality to join us and the municipal manager, uh, so that uh, you know, uh, if the committee uh, would like uh, to, to 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 ask anything, and they can also uh, briefly indicate on the current issues there, uh, as there seem to be you know other reports that keep on time coming up time and again. Uh, with your permission, Honorable Chair, without wasting any time, I'll ask um, uh, uh, Mrs. Sunu. Uh, as part of the delegation to uh, to uh, to make the presentation. Be, before that, just introduce your your delegation. And I wasn't aware that the municipality is here, but if they are here, they will also be afforded an opportunity to to briefly uh, address this meeting. Thanks. Yeah. Just thanks. introduce your delegation, all of them, quickly. Yeah, with with me is uh, uh, Mrs. Seonu. Um She is the director, uh, municipal uh, administration. And then I've got uh, Mr. Makongo. Uh, Mr. Makongo is the legal uh, uh, advisor of the department. And uh, Siabong Amdodi uh, is a parliamentary liaison officer from my my office. Uh, I'm just. I was just want to check because in the initial meeting, uh, which was postponed, honourable chair, the municipality uh, was invited, and therefore we thought that they were aware about the meeting, and uh, and uh, because we did preparations together as we we're preparing for the last meeting. Now, when I spoke to the mayor, the mayor wasn't aware, but uh, we have since uh, sent him a link to join uh, the meeting. Uh, but I can see he's not he here yet. Uh, yeah, I think Ms. Soon will talk whether she has managed to speak here. to the... I, I, I are you there? Yes, oh, I'm okay. Here. Oh, okay, that's good. I got the link, Mr. Emerson. Oh, okay, okay, that's good. Uh, yeah, uh, the, the gentleman speaking um, is the municipal manager for Magana. Uh, Mr. Man. And Mayor, uh, Mayor, 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 uh, Mayor, Mayor, Mayor is also here uh, in the meeting. Okay, okay. That that is the delegation, uh, Honorable Chair. Can I then ask uh, Ms. Soon to do the presentation with your permission? Honorable Chair.
Honorable Chair. We are listening. They can proceed oh. forward. Oh, okay, okay. The presentation, so it's okay. Okay. Ms. Uh, Uno. Thank you, MEC. Uh, good afternoon, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. I'll be presenting on the state of affairs of Unelso Magana local municipality. My presentation is twofold, Honorable Chairperson and members. Uh, initial, the first part of the presentation is giving a brief to the committee on the Section 139 intervention that was invoked uh, in 2014, which lapsed in 2016. And thereafter, subsequent to that, there's a new current uh, intervention, Section 139. Uh, subsection 5, which is currently underway in the municipality. Uh, can I take control of the presentation? Yeah. Uh, Honorable Chairperson and members, this is the presentation outline. Uh, basically, as a department, we are here to present to the committee the achievements that we gained in the intervention that went on in the municipality from 2014 to 2016, and further apprise the committee of the current intervention that is underway in the municipality. Uh, as a background, honorable members, we felt as a department that we need to give you a background because there was an intervention that was in the municipality uh, from 2014 to 2016. And the reasons or that made the provincial government to invoke provisions of Section 109 in the municipality at the time were along the following areas. There were institutional matters that led to the intervention. There was quite a number of vacancies in key positions in the municipality. There was lack of capacity, including the finalization of the organogram, your skills audit, uh, the LLF that was not fully functional. There were financial matters that were prevalent at the time. At the time of the intervention in 2014, the municipality achieved a consecutively four disclaimer audit opinions. Uh, there were creditors that were owed money by the municipality in excess of 100 million. One of the major creditors at the time was uh, ESCOM, which was owed an amount of money in excess of 65 5 million. 10 million to Auditor General and other creditors. There were challenges on governance, governance issues. There was inability to exercise oversight and effectiveness of council structures, of delegation framework, your governance framework that was just not in order. There were challenges that were confronting the municipality in respect of the service delivery. Your water provision, your, the municipality is a WSA, it's a, a service, a water service authority. So it was a having challenges in respect of provision of water, electricity, sanitation, housing, and waste uh, disposal. Um, further to the issues highlighted above, the municipality was confronted with ongoing uh, litigations that led to attachments of many of the municipal properties and also on the bank account of the municipality. It was obvious, it was an obvious matter that the municipality was unable to meet its debt uh, obligation. Uh, there was a series of protests from the communities and various stakeholders uh, raising issues of unhappiness and displeasure at the performance of the municipality. Uh, at the time, having looked at those challenges that were confronted by the municipality, the provincial government uh, decided to intervene. There were legal processes. There were legal processes that were followed prior to the intervention. But eventually, the cabinet, in its sitting of the 10th of September in 2014, resolved to approve. Prior to the cabinet uh, approving the intervention, the department seconded an official who acted as a municipal manager over a period of time, and all the attempts that were made by the department to support and save the municipality failed. Hence, eventually, the cabinet, provincial government, in its city on the, 20, on, the, on the 10th of September 2014, resolved to approve the intervention. And uh, an administrator by the name of Penny Abo was uh, sent to the municipality and assumed duties as an administrator on the 6th 
of October 2014. Uh, on the 17th of March, there were technicalities with the initial uh, intervention. The NCOP raised an issue of the department of, of the provincial government not informing the NCOP within the stipulated, stipulated time frame of the intervention. The NCOP was only uh, informed about the intervention immediately when the administrator was sent to the NCOP. So during the NCOP, NCOP visit, they raised the issue and felt that the department or the provincial government need to re-regularize the intervention and ensure that say, the legal processes are followed to the latter. So on the 17th of March, 2013, 2014, Expo, I can't see now, does this need to remove this? Um, sure. Uh, apologies, honorable members, there is this uh, icon which uh, is blocking my vision on the, on the presentation. But um, on the 17th of March, EXO set up and approved a new intervention in Makana. When the term of the administrator, Ms. Pemia, collapsed, the department sent a senior official, Mr. Komomo, as a new administrator in Makana. When the EXCO approved that intervention, it was not time bound. It, 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 it was there was no uh, there was no time attached. It was just said the intervention will carry on until such time that from the reports that are submitted by the administrator, the EXCO feels comfortable that there is progress, there is stability, all the issues have been addressed. Hence, that after the end of the contract of Ms. Pemiyako, uh, the department sent a senior official to carry on with the intervention. There were achievements, uh, honorable chairperson and members, uh, in the initial intervention. There were achievements in respect of the following uh, key focus areas. On, in respect of institutional stability, the recruitment of a municipal manager, as I've indicated earlier on, that there was a vacancy for quite a long time in, in the municipality. So the recruitment of the municipal manager was dealt with and it was nearly finalized. But at the time when the municipal manager was about to be appointed or the appointment to be confirmed, there was a court case. One of the candidates uh, challenged the appointment of uh, another incumbent that he or oh, he was not appointed to challenge that. The director engineering and technical services position at the time was filled and service delivery projects were then attended to because it was one of the key issues at the time. There was no director for technical services and as a result, projects were uh, couldn't move. Uh, there was a revised PMS framework uh, which was tabled to council and senior managers signed their performance agreement. All of these issues were, or all of these achievements, the things that were not happening prior to the intervention, there nobody could account for his or her own performance. Um, there were meetings between, uh, because there was a gap between management and the political arm of the, of the institution. So with the intervention, the administrator managed to ensure that there are bi-weekly meetings for purposes of information sharing and giving progress reports to the leadership of the institution, to the mayor, to the chief whip, and to the speaker, so that they are, in, they are better uh, place to inform the communities of the progress in respect of performance. In respect of finance, financial management and legal matters, the supply chain policies and financial management policies were developed, they were reviewed, uh, with the new term of council. There was a financial recovery plan that was developed and it was approved by the council with the assistance of the National Treasury. That financial recovery plan was implemented with all its strategies. There was an increase at the time on a uh, e revenue. A e revenue collection went up at least to 84%. Urevco, as a service provider contracted, continued with its attack and um, 
there was a question of a Kabuso report that was developed, which was never implemented its recommendations prior to the intervention. But when the intervention uh, was uh, was on, the Kabuso report, uh, its recommendations were implemented. Um, the external people implicated were dealt with by judiciary proceedings. Uh, and also there was an ad hoc committee that had to ensure that the implementation of Kabuso report is, is going on. Payment plans were arranged with creditors and they were honored and monitored consistently. In respect of good governance, all the oversight committees that were not sitting prior to the intervention were sitting as per the schedule of meetings, a number of audit prior years were dealt with. And due to the improved cooperation between Makana and Otta General, the disclaimer or audit opinion that was prevalent for the previous say, four consecutive years changed. There was a qualified audit opinion. Uh, the, of course, it was not a something to break on, but at least the municipality moved from being disclaimed to a qualified audit opinion. There was a municipal communication strategy that was reviewed, communicated, stakeholder engagements continued, and uh, the community of Magana was informed of the progress of things that are happening in the municipality. And as a result, there was also a petitions committee that was established, and it was functional, and everybody could see the progress at the time. In respect of corporate service and human resource management, because all of these key focus areas were the areas that when the provincial government took over, they took over those particular functions, so, had, so they had to be attended to. There was an organogram which was reviewed. Uh, its content updated, uh, both your macro and micro structure was presented to council by the end of March 2016. Job descriptions were developed and reviewed. All critical HR policies were reviewed and adopted by council in 2016, March 2016. Uh, there was an organizational culture survey that was conducted and the LLF was sitting. Uh, all the activities of the LLF were resuscitated and it started to operate uh, to be functional. Um, on infrastructure, a sanitation roadmap was started and was to be finalized by end of March. That was post the intervention. Roads upgrade proposal was developed. However, there was a question of uh, funding that was required from MIG. Um, the big funding was allocated for those uh, plants, your Belmont Valley and your Mayfield Petroleum Plant. There was an agreement with Amatola Water that was finalized and the consultant was at site as it end March 2016. Reason why I keep, I keep on making reference to all things up until end March is because just a, immediately after March, there was a proposal and an approval by the cabinet that the intervention must be lifted. 2016 is the year where there was going to be local government elections. So before the local government elections, it was then felt that the intervention must be lifted so as to allow a new a council to come in and, and to take over and proceed with the, all the outstanding matters of the intervention. Now, uh, subsequent to that, uh, honorable members, the new council came in in August 2016 and it proceeded. Uh, Mr. Makunga, our legal advisor, will talk on the matters of the case, but I will just, as part of this intervention, make a reflection on the new intervention. So, from 2016, with the new council, there was no intervention, but in 2019, uh, the Unemployed People's Movement of Magana instituted an application at Grandstaff High Court, ordering or directing the provincial executive to intervene in the affairs of Magana, proposing invocation of Section 1391C of the Constitution, proposing or propagating for a dissolution of the council. Uh, 
The, the, the application was carefully considered by the province in consultation with the state party. On careful consideration of the High Court application and supporting documentation, it became clear that the municipality, as a result of crisis in its financial affairs, is in persistent breach of its obligations. The view of the province was that even though there was a need, perhaps of an intervention, but Section 1391C was not the option. And as a result, in its special uh, expositing on the 29th of May, the Executive Council resolved that the necessary step to be taken uh, in terms of Section 139, 139 of the MFMA to prepare a financial and impose a financial recovery plan to the institution rather than a acceding to the dissolution of the council. And as such, as from May 2019, there's a financial recovery plan or the municipality is under the section 1295, which is a mandatory intervention in terms because of the financial crisis that is prevalent in the municipality. Now, the financial recovery plan was aimed at securing the municipality's ability to meet its application uh, to provide services and financial commitments in, in line with Section 1095. Now, through the support of the provincial treasury, a financial recovery plan was developed. It was tabled to council and approved and is currently being implemented by the municipality. Uh, with with the 20, one, uh, 2019 uh, resolution of the cabinet, the resolution uh, was that, or the cabinet resolved that they should not send an administrator, but there should be a joint task team of various government departments that are, are at play on the, at the local space, inclusive of national called Tayomisa, Office of the Premier, Provincial Treasury, Department of Water and Sanitation. That task team was established in order to do assessment and identify key areas that needed support. A, a support plan with tangible actions was developed with a view to ensure that at ultimate revenue enhancement and service delivery is key and is performed. Work by the joint uh, interdepartmental team is yielding some results in as far as service delivery is concerned in the municipality. To that effect, the current status quo as we're speaking is that in respect of ecological situation, the council is stable as we're speaking in the municipality, the position of the speaker, the executive mayor, and the whip of the council are filled. The council sits in line with the schedule that has been approved by council. It strikes amidst and it deals with issues including consultation, consulting the opposite opposition parties. Uh, there's a resolution register in place and the, all the council resolutions are tracked for implementation and report to that effect are presented to council in line with the rules of order. Immediately when the council sits, they first give progress report in respect of resolutions that have been taken in a, in, in a council meeting. In respect of the top management, the municipal manager was appointed after a long battle of that uh, court uh, a battle, which I made reference to in the prior uh, slides. He was appointed, um, the CFO has been appointed. Uh, it also took quite a long time to fill the position, but as we're speaking currently, there's a CFO, there's a municipal manager. Um, there is cohesion in the current team, though they lack some like historical knowledge of the institution, but in respect of the management of the institution, they are working quite well. Um, financial status, the finances of the municipality are stable now. The budget is funded after the intervention by provincial treasury. The municipality is honoring its commitments. Of course, it is indebted, but it does make effort to honor its commitments. Creditors, for example, like your ESCOM, Department of Water and Sanitation, your SALGA AG, are paid in line with the payment plan. The statutory obligations are honored by Magana. The institution is being is beginning to build reserves, though recently it has been affected by the COVID-19 uh, uh, 
situational challenges because it had to prioritize attending to matters that are related to that. But it's starting to gain the momentum in terms of the increasing revenue. In terms of your grant expenditure as a 20 June 2020, end June 2020, your RP, the municipality was allowed, was allocated 78 million at the beginning of the financial year and the expenditure was 89% at the end of the year. Your WISIG, uh, uh, apologies, honorable members, there is this icon which keeps on uh, blocking me. I can't see the latter part after end of June. But uh, if honorable members can see from the screen, you'll see at the end the, ex the percentage is expenditure. I can only read here the MIG allocation, which was 24.39 million. Uh, as at end of June, it was spending at 63% expenditure. Your INEP, uh, the entire funds for 2018-19 were rolled over to 2019-20, uh, and the expenditure there was 100%. The drought allocation of 4.5 million and the municipality spent 0% at the end of June. OMM will give an explanation to that. Um, in terms of the financial recovery plan, it's being implemented, honorable members, by Magana. Uh, the collection rate of the municipality for 2018, 2019 20 is at 80%. Um, the COVID-19 has reduced that to around 56%. The municipal manager and the CFO consistently, without any fail, on monthly basis, they submit their Section 71 reports and the media report in terms of Section 72 was also submitted. Your audit outcomes, unfortunately, uh, have regressed. They are disclaimed. Uh, the audit action plan has been approved. Uh, I can't see that, uh, that line. COCTA, Provincial Treasury, Salga, and Sarah Batman, District Municipality, are working closely together, collaborating in support of the institution of the municipality. Uh, as, a, as a last slide, it is recommended that the committee note the report of the interventions that were implemented in 2014 and the current current state of affairs that is uh, at play in the municipality. Thank you, MEC. Thank you, Honorable members. Thank you very much. Can we take the submission from the legal advisor on the court? And please address us in the way that I have spelled out to just emphasize, I said, we, if the matter, yes, indeed, is is with the highest court, uh, you must not go into that space. Just brief us about the court case. Who lost it? When? What happened? What were the reasons for the court case? What was the judgment? And, and how did you take the matter to the, to the highest court? Based on that, we will develop a way in which we are not going to interfere with the court, but I think this committee is entitled to know and to be updated about the court, about the court case itself. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Members. Um, uh, I'm using uh, Mr. C. Unu's, uh connectivity. I've got my slight challenge. Um, on the 14th of January this year, the Grahamstown High Court delivered a judgment against the Provincial Executive Council, in terms of which uh, Exco was directed to dissolve the Municipal Council of Makana, and the court also declared that uh, uh, the there are juristic facts which uh, necessitate an intervention in terms of section 139 subsection 5 and and then subsequent to that um the provincial executive council took a decision 
uh, to appeal, to further uh, the appeal process. It was on the 8th of, uh, the judgment was delivered on the, they leave to appeal, yes, after after the 20th of, of January. Then uh, the ex and decided, no, let's appeal the judgment. Let's apply for a leave to appeal. Uh, there was also another application, Honorable Chair, which is critical. Uh, after a leave to appeal, uh, an application for leave to appeal was filed, the applicants, which is a, a UPM, Unemployed People's Movement, made another application to say, pending the, 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 the leave to appeal, let the judgment be effected meaning therefore the council must be dissolved whilst the provincial executive is appealing. So both of these applications were heard on the 8th of May, 2020. And uh, the judgment was delivered on the 21st of May, 2020. The court dismissed uh, the application for leave to appeal and then postponed the, what we call section 18 application, which is the one that says, dissolve council pending appeal. That was postponed indefinitely. Uh, the reasons for court to decide against uh, the application for leave to appeal, the court relied on section 172, subsection 1B of the constitution, which gives the court a uh, discretion to make any order, as long as that order is both just and equitable. And uh, now, where we disagreed with the court was when the judgment, the judge said, this provision empowers the court to grant even an, even an order that was not asked for. Then that's where we had a, a, a serious uh, objection. Uh, we sought instructions again from the Provincial Executive Council and the view was that let's approach the Supreme Court of Appeal uh, so that we can eventually have access to the full bench. The reason why there are all these appeals, one, when we oppose the application initially, we're saying uh, the provincial executive cannot be mandated to dissolve council because section 139 subsection 1C is a discretionary intervention, unlike the MFMA uh, section, one, uh, section one, sec 139 and subsection 5 of the Constitution. Those are mandatory. But uh, uh, section 139.1c is discretionary. And therefore, uh, our view was that it will be inappropriate for court to direct uh, ex court to to exercise the discretion, especially uh, in, in as far as invoking a more intrusive uh, form of intervention in the in, in local government. Also, then when the matter was argued, the argument of the of the province was accepted by court, but the court said, okay. You say you have intervened in terms of section 139, subsection 5. Then I will make an order in terms of a section 139, subsection 5, but I would want you now to dissolve council under that 139, subsection 5. So this, the court granted what was not asked for by uh, UPM because we, uh, the province had already started uh, 139 intervention. Uh, because there was a serious uh, financial problem in, in, in Matana, so we're mandated as the provincial government to intervene. But the court said, uh, <coughs> go straight to the to the to the west uh, form of intervention, dissolve council. And then this is where we are not in agreement because, as Mrs. Seun has made uh, her presentation, there's a. There's a concerted effort by all spheres of government to make a turnaround at Makana. We, we've got uh, uh, the provincial treasury, the premier, we've got uh, national cocta, national treasury, we've got MISA. 
So in the opinion of, uh, of the province, we have not reached a stage where we can say uh, the council must be dissolved, even in terms of section 139, subsection 5. So that's the main contention, uh, Honorable Chair. The matter now uh, uh, is referred to the SCA. Uh, we're just awaiting the outcome. The SCA will determine whether or not you must be, it won't be heard at the, at the SCA, but the SA will determine whether or not you must be granted access to the full bench uh, of the Eastern Cape uh, Provincial Division so that we have a benefit of a higher court because this uh, matter has got serious implications. Uh, it creates a precedent that will bind not only the Eastern Cape Province, but it will bind the entire country. And uh, we, our view is that uh, we need a benefit of a uh, of a full bench because we are not happy with the reasoning of the of the of the uh, of the court of the first instance, which is the Grimstown High Court. Uh, that is, uh, in, in essence, uh, honourable chair. But I can take that. Yeah, yes, but before we proceed forward, you have not addressed us on a very important matter. That is, what did the unemployment people's movement say? What are those jurisdictional issues that they raised with you <clears throat> that made them to go to court? Specific of them that you had the municipality was doing A, B, C, D, or it was contravening A, B, C, D, and and that that for me is quite important because it speaks to the time that you invoke Section 139B of the Constitution. That is in 2014 and and after the elections of 2016. Please address the committee on that before I open up for, for, for questions. That is very much important. What were those issues that the unemployed people's movement raised in court that convinced the court to, 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 to accede to Section 1391C of the Constitution? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um... <clears throat> The UPM was saying, one, the Makana local municipality has failed to ensure that uh, services are provided to the community in a sustainable manner. Uh, they raised, one, the issue of water crisis. Uh, they say that there was a problem uh, with the provision of water in, in, in that uh, municipality. They also still on the provision of services. They raised the issue of uh, the sewage problem, that they were, it was a common norm uh, that there would be a, a sewage spillages uh, in the municipality, in the in the municipal area. They also still on the provision of services uh, raised the the issue of waste, that uh, the waste management. Uh, uh, left much to be desired. They, they had pictures in all these matters where they were raising. Uh, they also, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, indicated that the provincial government did intervene as, as, uh, as presented by this charity. They said uh, those interventions did not yield results. They were still having, the situation is even worse. So uh, the, the extent of non-compliant uh, uh, failure to, to implement executive obligation is becoming worse at Makana. They said we had an administrator. There was a MM deployed from the district. And uh, all those efforts uh, did not yield the results. And in their opinion, the municipal council was responsible for, for non compliance with the constitutional provision, especially provision of, of services. They also cited the electricity problem, the road infrastructure problem. So basically they were saying the municipality has failed to provide services to its community in a sustainable manner as required in terms of section 152 of the constitution. And they say the only option available now is for the provincial government to dissolve the municipal council. That's basically uh, what uh, the UPM was complaining about. And in fact, and in fact if I may add, Chair, the court, the court agreed, uh, the court yeah. said 
the court said uh, when we they said provincial government you say you now we have intervened in terms of section 139 subsection 5 uh, which requires you to impose a financial recovery plan. They said, no, there was a financial recovery plan in 2014. 14. And that, that financial recovery plan has not been implemented. What's going to change now? That was the, 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 the contention of the court. In fact, if you read through the judgment of the 20th uh, January, the theme of that judgment is on the failure by municipality to implement it. The FRP. That's the main uh, theme of uh, the charge. The charge focuses on the FRP, and uh, the judge read thoroughly uh, the FRP, and uh, it read it against what, what was alleged in the papers. And the finding of the court was that there is no need now to impose financial recovery plan. It, the 2014 was not implemented. Uh, what what remains to be done is to dissolve council. Okay. And uh, if even now the section 18 chair, because uh, this 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 will also uh, uh, the NCOP must not be taken by surprise. You remember I said uh, uh, the court was going to hear the the leave to appeal, as well as the application in terms of section 18, which says pending appeal, dissolve council or judgment must be effected. So the court postponed that one indefinitely. Now, uh, the applicant have re revived that uh, application. Uh, and on the 18th September, the court will hear that application. Whether there is a, there's a determination by Supreme Court of Appeal or, 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 or otherwise, on, on the 18th, the, the matter will be before court again. Now, to, to entertain an application, it says, pending. The court, uh, the appeal process, judgment must be implemented. The provincial government is opposing that as well, as well as uh, with the municipality. Okay. Thank you, Chair. All right. Thank you very much for the presentation. We we now know and understand better what is the situation. Uh, Your Worship, Executive Mayor, I'm going to give you about 10 minutes to address us, and thereafter we will have more time as, as the committee, about two hours to engage with this presentation, which is very much uh, important. Over to you, Your Worship, and your team. Executive Mayor. Anyone from the municipality? Anyone from the municipality? Let's pack the municipality. We'll come back to, to it. They, they've got to address us on all of these issues so that we know what is the state of affairs in the municipality. I'm going to give them a call now, sir. Okay, no, it's okay. Just do that, but... Uh, it's fine. Let us uh, start engaging. Honourable members, we we have sufficient time to 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 engage with the presentations. I'm not sure how it will go. I will give one member an opportunity to to ask questions, and I will expect answers. Go to the next member, ask questions, expect answers, so that. We don't leave any question behind, and all the questions are answered quite properly by by the provincial government. Over to you, members. Who's, who's starting? Chair, Minister. Oh, Comrade Sharida. Well, who else is following me? I'll be next. Uh, Honorable Zandamela. Okay, Honorable yes. Let's start with the five and we'll see how it goes and afford other members an opportunity as well. I, I've also invited all members of 
of uh, the permanent members of the Eastern Cape. I think it's quite good that when we deal with issues of the provinces, we extend an inv invite to them if they're available, they, they, they attend because these are the matters affecting them as, uh, as provinces. Over to you, Honorable uh, Said. Yeah, uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, I'm going to start with the initial presentation. Um, there are areas that are raised uh, which led to the implementation of the intervention, which are not necessarily, we don't necessarily, well, this presentation is not giving us a report on. Um, one of the areas I think that the report doesn't speak to, uh, especially around the institutional matters that led to the intervention was around a skills audit. Uh, perhaps they can give us information around that. Um, and somewhere they mentioned the issue of um, the appointment of the municipal manager not being finalized. And I just wanted some progress, some progress on that matter, Chair. I think in terms of uh, financial matters, um, let me not speak about the audit now, but uh, some of the areas that were raised were around debts, municipal debts. Um, in relation to ESCOM, the debt with ESCOM, perhaps if they can give us progress around what is the, the ESCOM current balance uh, and if there are any payment arrangements, um, let alone if such arrangements are sustainable, if we can get an indication of that. And that the, they they make mention of the Kabuso report recommendations that were implemented. Um, and that uh, they say that staff implicated were given letters to respond. I just want to know if indeed any action was taken, especially in terms of, of consequent management in relation to all staff that have been implicated. Chair, um, my other issue, uh, yeah, I think it relates to another area that they don't give us progress on in terms of the intervention, which is electricity, which is also a matter which is raised by, by that organization that took them to court. Um, yeah, and, and then in terms of the roads issue, um, when they speak about progress on the matter, uh, it says that funding was required from the, while the, the roads upgrade proposal was developed, funding was still required from the MIG, but uh, I, I guess, I'm not sure, but perhaps they should tell us what is the progress on that in terms of the intervention itself. And then Chair, I think the issues that relate to the court matter, uh, I guess are all issues that were relating to the actual intervention. Uh, and perhaps I would just say, Chair, uh, you know, in terms of our responsibility in the NCOP, and given the scenario that has been presented with this court issue, uh, perhaps there's a need also for us as a committee to ensure that our monitoring and assessment of such interventions are more vigorous, Chair, so that um, we don't end up with uh, interventions ending in, in a manner that this one is also ended. Uh, thank you. Oh, oh, Chair, and then my last issue, I think, was around the issue of the disclaimer uh, following the Section 1395 in, uh, intervention. Um, what were the reasons uh, for, for this regression? Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, honorable members. Let's go straight to the answers. Answer those questions that honorable Shaikh has answered. Don't go this and that way. Answer those questions straight. Okay. So now let me see over to you. And now let me see. Uh, 
Honorable MEC, you have the director for administration and the legal advisor. Respond to those questions, please. Okay. Okay. Honorable Samai, okay, okay. can, okay. can you mute your mic, please? Uh, Honorable Chairperson, we'll respond to, to those questions, though some of the, the current progress in respect of the areas uh, that have as Honorable Chairperson. Honorable Chairperson. Uh, we will respond to the questions that were raised by Honorable Sheikh, but some of the responses we will need a direct response from the municipality. But in respect of the first question that was talking to initial uh, intervention in respect of institutional matters, uh, the presentation did raise the fact that one of the things that led to the intervention, there was there was no stability in respect of matters related to institutional matters. The skills audit is one of the issues because uh, it's one of the issues that needed to be attended to because the municipality was falling short in delivering its services. Uh, at the time of the intervention, when the department or the province was doing an assessment and analysis of the issues, we're looking at the expenditure of the institution, and we realized that uh, there was quite huge expenditure in respect of uh, COE expenditure. And one of the things that we've discovered was that uh, there was too much uh, overtime and too much expenditure on COE, but the COE expenditure was not equivalent to the services or matters related to delivering of services. So there was some kind of a disjuncture. If you look at the organogram of the institution, how bloated it was, and the work that is done on the floor, on the ground, that is not related, uh, or the services that are not being uh, delivered by the institution. And as such, after the assessment, we felt it is necessary to do proper skills audit and to check what are the powers and functions of the municipality are, and what skills are available in the institution, what are the deficiencies, what is it that makes it not be on par with what is supposed to be delivered by the municipality. So the question of the skills audit came to that effect to say there's a, there's a, a bloated organogram, a, services cannot be delivered, the powers of and functions of the municipalities cannot be cannot be addressed. Where where is where does the problem lie? Hence, there was a need to do a skill audit. In respect of the appointment of the municipal manager, there was a vacancy in the municipality for quite some time, and uh, when the intervention uh, started in 2014. The administrator facilitated the recruitment of the municipal manager. One of the applicants uh, in the in the in the uh, for the position of the municipality was a councillor, who was a councillor in the institution. And uh, when the well, report, yes, yes, yes. Had, yes, well, it is fine. You said that one of the applicants interdicted the process, and the yes, process sir. was not filled up. But yes. Now this field up. That's yes. What you said. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, thanks, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Um, the question of uh, the municipal debt and the ESCOM or the creditors of the municipality, the current ESCOM arrangement and the payment plan, 
uh, that one will be responded to by the municipality because we don't have the current figures, but what we know and as we are monitoring the municipality is that the municipality does have a tent a payment arrangement or a payment plan with ESCOM that is being honored by the municipality. In respect of the figures, in terms of how much do they pay monthly, the municipal manager will respond to that, we are liaising with the municipality. Uh, and also matters relate, uh, currently relating to your electricity and to your, to your road uh, works, progress in respect of that, there is a current report, as we have indicated, Honorable Shepherdson, that there's a joint venture in assisting the municipality. MISA is, at play, is, is on board, and also uh, the district is assisting, and the colleagues from UNISA will, or the municipality will respond, because there's work that is being done on various projects in respect of electricity, your water, and your and thank you, Chairperson. The issues pertaining to the specifics in terms of the disclaimer opinion, the electricity and the sewer, and the municipality will pack in those. The municipality will respond to that. We need that information. Honorable yes. uh, Mr. Honorable Zandamela. Chair. Am I available? <clears throat> yeah, but there's something with your okay, yes. Am I fine? No. Yes. No, Chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just want to check a few things. I'm actually a bit confused, Chairperson, because uh, on the whole side, I'm gonna just set your mind. There's something in addition that is that is not okay behind me. Is it? Something again that you switched on. How is it now? Is it fine? It's bad. It's better. Bad. Bad. It's been there, but proceed. It's fine. Oh, okay. Now, chair, the. The, the intervention uh, from what we are hearing start, uh, was imposed uh, or was, uh, was approved in, 20, in 2014. Now, I'm, I'm a bit lost, Chairperson, and then uh, in the presentation it was said um, it, was, it, was, uh, it was approved, but there was no time frame on the intervention. And uh, I'm not sure. I just want to be clarified there because uh, it, was it according to law? Can you can you can you impose uh, intervention without time frames? Uh, first time I'm hearing that. And besides, the second thing that I would like to ask Chairperson is um, uh, we had local government elections in, in 2016. And uh, once uh, elections are declared, that the elections is then council is dissolved. And to my understanding, there was supposed to be new council in, in 2016 in that municipality. Now, uh, if I can just be clarified there. Then the second issue that uh, I would like to raise, Chairperson, that it's in connection with the, the court cases that uh, we're hearing about. I, I'm still not clear how we arrived at this whole court cases uh, and, and finding the matters in court. Uh, and then if the, those case, we are there now, those ca court cases, but then I, I, want, I would like to, to get from, 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 from the MEC uh, that who, who's paying for those court cases, because I can see it's appeals after appeals. And the last one, Chairperson, that it's a concern that I'm raising that it's really difficult because we, at the moment, we only hearing one side uh, of the story. And uh, what we just heard from uh, the, the previous speakers that uh, when you ask the question, who actually took 
council to, 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 to I mean the, the MEC to court, I mean the province to court, we are told it's U, UPM, unemployment. Uh, 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 I would suggest that, you know, it's difficult to say because they are not part of the meeting. Then we only hear one side of, of, of the story. Now, uh, earlier on, you requested the, the municipality to respond. It looks like they also we've lost them there. They, they are no longer part of the meeting. I don't know you managed to get them. Both. And then, uh, yeah, I would suggest, Chairperson, it's, it's very difficult to deal with this issue because we're not getting uh, what we're supposed to be getting. I mean, there's a lot of questions that we can ask, and, and I don't think we'll get uh, an answer from those questions. And uh, if possible, Chairperson, I, I think an oversight will assist this committee more than what we are doing now, because we're dealing with people that are supposed to be giving us information and they are not part of the meeting. Uh, yeah, I think I'll stop there, Chairperson. Thank you. Okay. Uh, responses? Three specific questions. Is it legally possible that you uh, do intervention without the time frame period? And the second one, does the intervention not ceasing when fresh elections are held? And the, other, the last question is about the unemployed people's movement. Answer those questions, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, through the MEC, um, the, the intervention is regulated uh, by the Constitution, Section 139. And uh, when the NCOP uh, objected to the process, it provided uh, a remedy on how to remedy uh, the steps that were missed, and that was done. So, uh, and uh, that intervention was constitutional. The, the second aspect, uh, yes, when when the term ends of the council, then obviously the intervention would end if uh, the term ends uh, if the term ends bef uh, after after uh, the elections. But in the situation in Makana, the intervention ended in April, which was way before the the, the elections. So. When the new council was uh, elected, there was no intervention there. Um, the, the UPM, uh, yes, is this the unemployed people's movement that uh, instituted an application uh, against uh, the EXCO? They wanted the provincial executive to, to take steps to dissolve council. Uh, and then uh, the, the, the EXCO resolved to oppose uh, that application. Uh, yeah, I, I think, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, the, the issue of paying yeah. costs, I think it was just a comment. Uh, uh, yeah, but answer it. Who's paying? Okay. The cost? Yes. The, the costs uh, are paid. Uh, there's a budget uh, that is available, Honorable Chair. Uh, because from time to time, the, the, the court uh, instituted against uh, the provincial government. Uh, so, yes, uh, we, 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 we pay cost of litigation. Uh, the state attorney represents uh, government and the Department of Justice pays, and then we reimburse them. Uh, so they, they send their invoices. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Uh, who's next? I guess is the, the executive Fire. mayor, honorable chair. Fire. Yeah, I have no. We'll come back to the executive mayor. It's okay. If she, if he's yep. back, it's fine. Yeah, honorable Zander uh, can you move, please? No, it's me. It's me. Yeah. Fire. Honorable Zander Mela, can you move? Yes. Oh, oh, I wanted to, because my question was not answered, I wanted to check if you will come back to me or should I raise a follow-up so that that matter is exhausted. Oh, that, only which uh, one specifically? I, I was, uh, I'm referring to the the matter of the court, up, uh, the court. because uh, I wanted to understand, Chairperson, why 
why ESCO opposed to the court application by the by the UP, UPM, whereas we've got constitutional processes that must be followed. We all know the constitutional processes that must be followed to arrive to the matter of the municipality to be dissolved. As my understanding that the UPM applied for that for, for the dissolvement of, 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 of the council. And it is a constitutional processes. So why is the ESCO defending, I would say, a matter that's not constitutional? Thank you, Chairperson. I'm not sure how, but it is constitutional. And as the response is, it is the provincial government is defending the because it was litigated by by the UPM and they acted on the basis of of that and they carrying the cost. And I, that is why we do not want to venture into the court case, but it is the the right or the decision of the ex of the Eastern Cape to, to decide to challenge the matter in court because they are not litigants here, they are defendants. I'm not sure in what way that, that the Constitution uh, not being followed. But it's okay, we'll come back to that. Let us hear other members and we know that particular part if it is not going to be comprehensively uh, responded to. <clears throat> Honorable uh, Mfayela. Yeah, thank you very much, Honorable Chairperson. I want also to create uh, the, 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 the dedication from Makana and the, in the, from, the, from, the, from the province. Honorable Chair, um, this uh, intervention uh, took place from 2014 up to 2016, just after uh, local election. Now, the, the report that they are giving us is from 2014 to 2016. We offer it, we are appreciating to have such a report. But, uh, uh, Honorable Chair, I think the Makana and the delegation, they owe us a report from 2016 to date. We want to know more as to what happened after the, the, the after the, the intervention, because I believe a honorable chairperson, there was a leadership from, 25, from 2014 to 2016. And because of the new election, uh, because of the local election, obviously there were new leadership that took over from 2016 to date. The Makana municipality they owe us to 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 appraise us about this period of 2016 to date. Why I'm saying this, honourable chair president, because after all this happened, there's still a group of people, unemployed movement, who still uh, uh, who still think that. Not all has been done as far as the intervention was concerned. Now, the other issue that is still uh, puzzling me is that when they implement this intervention on the purchase, the MEC or the ESCO of that time, they give the intervention without time frame. It's very rare. It's very rare to give an intervention without time frame. And uh, without further ado, Honorable Chairperson, I would love to hear from the from the from the people uh, from the province and from Makana people as to how is the municipality right now. If you, if you can go to Makana today, what kind of status do we find there? I thank you. Okay. I think uh, Makana people, Makana delegation, the mayor, they respond to those questions. What is the state of affairs today in Makana? And share with us what has happened since 2016 to date. Because as Honorable Mfaela is saying, uh, despite what you are saying or telling this committee, 
the unemployed people's movement has taken you to court and the court has agreed with with that movement uh, to an extent that the uh, the the call the court has said let you be dissolved can you brief us on that please Thank you very much, Chairperson <clears throat> and honorable members of the NCOP, uh, MEC, and the colleagues present here. My name is Mzukisi, my surname is Mpato. I'm the executive mayor of Makana Municipality. Uh, honorable Mayor, um, MEC, and uh, honorable Chairperson, yes, indeed, uh, after 2016, a new, uh, after the elections of 2016, a new administration came into being in Makana, as it has done in all over the country. I personally uh, joined the municipality in 2019 uh, as the mayor uh, of Makana municipality. Um, I'm just wanting to give an account of the question that was raised around the debt management. Uh, indeed, there are a number of uh, creditors that we owe as the municipality, and most of them have taken us to court and one of them being ESCOM. Uh, when ESCOM took us to court and threatened to disrupt electricity, um, we were mandated by the court to come together as, uh, with ESCOM and agree on a repayment plan, because the repayment plan that was in place was unsustainable. And then we agreed with ESCOM that we'll be paying them 7 million rand every month. Uh, since then, we have been sticking to that arrangement, Honorable Chair, religiously without fail every month to the extent that ESCOM and uh, the National Treasury has praised uh, Makana municipality as being one of the only municipalities that have been sticking to that. Honorable Chair, the challenge of Makana municipality as it has been raised already is a financial one in that the municipality when I came in uh, was owed by the residents, uh, by the business, and by the communities uh, in excess of 539 million rands. Uh, that uh, debt has now escalated to almost 600 million rands, Chairperson. Um, <clears throat> so within that particular budget uh, that we have, and of course our collection rate is now sitting at 70%, uh, as it was reported, uh, Honorable Chair, uh, with COVID, it went down to uh, 55%, and it has just picked again up after the COVID. So we are trying all our best within those uh, limited financial constraints to attend to all of the challenges that we have. A municipal manager chairperson has been appointed. Uh, he came in uh, in October, in August of 2018. A CFO, Honorable Chair, has been also coming in. He came in in, in December of 2018. So you have a team of relatively new uh, administration in the, in the Makana municipality. But within that, Honorable Chair, there are a number of programs that we are implementing, assisted by the national and the provincial government. When it comes to water, for example, if I may just, without wasting a lot of time, Chair, we have got a number of projects, including the James Clay Nance project, wherein we are trying to double the capacity of that facility so that we're able to have sustainable water for the residents of Makana. That project is now in phase two. It's got four phases. Uh, it's over 500 million rands that the Department of Water and Sanitation has put in there and have appointed Amatola Water as the implementing agent. Um, phase two is now complete. We are now going on into phase three uh, so that we can have enough water in that regard. There are also a number of other projects to ensure that we get water. Uh, we are improving our water facilities and our sewer facilities uh, with the money that we get from WISIG, from MIG, and all of those other uh, agents that are granting us with the water. So our biggest problem at the moment is on the sewer. Uh, our sewer facilities are overcapacitated um, because of uh, aged infrastructure, and that is why we're already, always having uh, spillages 
uh, from time to time. But we are also, with the limited resources that we have, uh, trying to also upgrade those so as to make sure that they are operating 100%. Um, including our water facilities as well. Um, also, with uh, regards to the road infrastructure, the road infrastructure has since collapsed. A lot of potholes exist. Uh, we don't have enough money, as we said. And when we looked at this situation, we were of the view that uh, it would need more than 300 million rands to, to resurface all of the road infrastructure in Magana. In terms of our own revenue generated budget, we have only allocated 2 million rands, which obviously is not enough to patch, to patch the potholes. We are also in the process of, a, we have already appointed a, a, a company uh, to manage the landfill site because we have also been taken to court in regard to that one. We have appointed a company called Mpele, the service provider, because we do not have enough capacity in-house, nor do we have enough financial muscle to deal with that. So that company is giving us monthly reports, which we are submitting to the litigants and to the court. So we are saying, Chairperson, um, with the current situation, the situation in Makana is different from the situation in 2014. Uh, we are doing everything in our power within the limited resources to ensure that we deliver the services uh, that you are required um, by the citizens of Makana. But the biggest challenge, as we said, is a financial one where we are owed uh, close to 600 million rents by the residents. And our creditors, we owe our creditors uh, about 268 million rents uh, so that if we were able to get all of the money from those that owe us, we would be able to pay our creditors and still have enough money to uh, do the services that are required in Makana. That is all the chairperson that I can say in short in trying to respond to some of the questions that are allocated to you, us. You started as a mayor in 2019. Yes, Before sir. That, where were you? Were you part of the council? Or you no, sir. I was not part of the I was not part of the chair of the council chair. I was uh, 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 put in from cold from outside. I was not okay. part of the I just joined, I just joined in 2019 um, okay. in January, Chair. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Honorable Mutsamai. Hello, Hashem Pese. Thank you, Municipality Manager, Mama Kama. I am a former. Who already changed our Bato Patala Esco seven million? Badumalan one gets to our Bata Patalas, Le Esco. One municipality manager, Hazanga Yafela, who Macab, and I want to say it to Magama, when I lay in Dago, one of Pumalang, more hot than I tell you to lower the pump or by the spirit. Pom and two on summit. Bankile and two on summit because Mesira for no fitella, Mudicilla Gomaga, Camo and Pumala and the little that. I am a man and the Mosamai. I'm going to come a karma like this this matter to court. And the just translating exactly what he's saying is that he wants to know whether are you sustaining the 37 million rents that you pay to escrow on continuous basis and how did it come about that you took the matter to 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 court and who's paid all that i'm doing is to translate if, if there were responses 
How did it come about that you took the matter to court and you spoke for the legal costs? Yeah. Uh, respond to those questions, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we did not take the matter to court ourselves as a municipality. Uh, ESCOM was owed uh, by municipality and ESCOM threatened to disrupt electricity supply. And then the businesses then uh, I went to court to, to intervene, to ask the court not to disrupt the electricity supply. And then we were then dragged in that fashion. And then we then together with uh, ESCOM revised the repayment plan. And we advised that in respect of the money that we can afford, we can only afford 7 million rand a month in them back, which we will complete that at that in 2021. So we uh, then agreed with that ESCOM, and then we went jointly to, to the court uh, with ESCOM to say, this is now an agreed repayment plan. And that is the amount that I'm saying that Makana municipality has been paying religiously without fail since uh, 2019. Thank you, Chair. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable uh, uh, Lugo, that's your turn. Oh, thank you very much, Chair. And let me welcome uh, the delegation from, from the province and from the municipality and to my fellow committee members. Um, I'm happy that is to see that all of you are still safe, although we've lost one member. And I would just like to say my condolences to Mama Mola. You know, I won't have anybody to call me Bochi anymore. So that was a sad part. I was not even sure to pay my respects. But uh, the work continues, Chair. Chair, you know, what is worrisome for me is that these provinces has a responsibility of being the intervening authority. And what tends to happen is that they don't do their utmost, utmost in terms of making sure that they intervene at the right time and they put the right mechanisms so that they, they do actually turn around these municipalities. So it's no wonder that a court should actually dictate that you should actually dissolve this municipality because you have failed in your, in your duty as an intervening authority to actually turn around this municipality. You know, and what tends to happen is that they keep on intervention and intervention and intervention and intervention. Because one of the things that is important that is made by the judgment and what the legal, legal advisors all, also confirmed is that when they intervened, they were supposed to be a, a, a FRP, financial recovery plan, which was there, but this financial recovery plan was never implemented. Now I ask myself, who should bear the responsibility of making or failing the people of Makana or making sure during intervention, you know, we follow the terms of reference and the financial recovery plan is implemented. It was never implemented. As a result, now another body must go and tell them that you are actually failing the people of Makana. Hence, you are going to the courts to make sure that you you become you you are dissolved. What I would like to ask from to the department, and maybe chair, they might not have the answers now, but I would like them to confirm or deny the allegation that the previous administrator was paid three hundred thousand per month. Is it true or is it just? You know, thumb suck or it's just lies. And also in terms of the previous uh, intervention, how much did the, the, the provincial department of the Eastern Cape actually pay? Because there's also stuff written that there has been bailout after bailout, you know, and we, I, I just like to know in terms of how much since they have intervened in that particular municipality, have they bailed that municipality out? And can they, can that particular municipality account for the bailouts that has been given to them during the first intervention. And Chair, also, let me also try to confirm or try to add on what Honorable Zazanda Mela is saying. 
I, I sit here and I find myself very compromised because I'm hearing a different view, only two views, let me say, from the mayor and maybe the, the MM, and then I'm hearing from the intervention, intervention authority, which is the provincial department. But there are other stakeholders in council, like your other parties, but I don't know whether they, why they were not invited. So I, we don't know what is their views in terms of what is actually currently taking place in that particular municipality, so that we can have a, a broader view of things that are actually going wrong. And in terms of the oversight bodies, I don't see any oversight bodies or individuals that are serving on these oversight bodies that have been called, you know, so that they can also account and make sure that they give us their version in terms of what is currently actually happening, you know, in Makana. Because with this COVID-19, we have been, you know, limited in actually going on the ground and see for ourselves and engage with the broader community to make sure which, what we are hearing there is actually the truth and there's nothing else. And also what is worrisome, Chair, in this particular case, I'm not going to venture into the appeal, but I'm going to venture into what the judge has been saying. The judge has actually said to the provincial executive that all the things that has actually led the judge to actually agree that Makana should be dissolved. When they were defending the, the judgment or, or going asking for, an, for a right to appeal, the department, the provincial department could not actually dispute the things that uh, that that has actually led for the judge to actually dissolve to go to the decision saying devolving them because the department has actually said we have intervened in Makana but when they were asked for proof to say how did you intervene what what, what constructive plans or tangible proof is there to, to make sure that you actually intervene there was none whatsoever and I find out uh, when when these things keep happening, where monies have been spent on interventions, after interventions, a municipality goes after in intervention after intervention, and there is no consequent management. The provincial departments are not are not accounting, you know, and it's it's a worrisome. We really need to change the way in how we do interventions because in this manner it's not right. We are spending a lot of money and then we don't see any results. And also, Chair, I would like to ask the MM and the, and the mayor, because they've been found that they have been found to be in contempt of court in terms of a judgment. I just want to know how far is that judgment? Has that judgment been implemented that they were found to be in contempt of? Just to give us a, you know, in terms of clarity, of how far are they in terms of implementing that judgment when it comes to the sewer? And also, there is also, a, the, a ruling that was made by the judge, specifically to an affidavit that was done by a particular, I don't know whether by the MM of the mayor, where the judge said that affidavit should actually to be referred to the independent or public prosecutor to make because there is there was perjury committed when that affidavit was done. So I'm, I might be right, I might be correct, incorrect, I might be wrong, but I just like to know, I want to ask just a, someone to clarify that judgment of saying, is that thing, where is it standing? Is it going to be followed up? Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you very much. Let me just clarify two issues before we proceed forward. This presentation was about Section 139. Then we had invited the provincial government and the municipality. Now, when I read this presentation, I thought that they had included the court and we couldn't just come here just on the basis of the presentation of 139 and close our eyes and act as if there is no court uh, process that is unfolding in respect of Makama. It is for that reason that I said we need to be briefed about the court. And, and, and at that point, we had not included uh, the the unemployed people's movement, which in my view, I don't think that we need to include them because the matter is adjudicated before the court. And, and, and secondly, I don't want us to venture at all on the matters of court as to who said what, who forged what, who, what is happening. All that we need to do is to raise the issues that belong to us, that we're supposed to ask about who pays, where is the process, 
when it is completing. In, in, I'm sure after that, we'll come back to this issue and, and deal with those particular issues as to why did matters have to happen in the way that they are happening now. And my, my, I sincerely request members that let us avoid the, the court uh, case in the meantime. But I accept that I think part of what we need to do here is to agree at the end of this meeting that we need to undertake an oversight visit uh, to Makama as part of going to observe on our own what is the situation. But having said that, I would love uh, the municipality and the provincial government to respond on the question, the important questions that Honorable Sileti uh, posed uh, to, uh, to this meeting. Over to you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Uh, it's uh, Mrs. Siwunu again. Uh, I would like to respond. The municipality will respond to other questions, but uh, there's a question from the Honorable Member that referred to non-implementation of the FRP, the Financial Recovery Plan, during the initial intervention. Um, it, it, it is not quite uh, true that the financial recovery plan was never implemented. It was uh, implemented from 2014 uh, up until the intervention was lifted in 2016. And as a result, uh, the presentation does make a reflection on the achievement during the first intervention. Now, if you look at the FRP, the FRP talks to a number of strategies. They are seven in total. They are related to various functional areas of the municipality. They will be talking to your governance issues, talking to your service delivery issues, talking to your institutional uh, capability of the institution, and many other things, your human resource and everything else. So the presentation, if you, 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 you went along with the presentation, it made a reflection on the achievement in respect of all those uh, strategies that are in the FRP. The intervention, of course, was not time bound. Uh, the first intervention, the, 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 the provincial government first approved an intervention for a period of six months. And we gave as a, as a department report to the EXCOM on quarterly basis. At the end of the six months, the provincial government felt it necessary to continue with the intervention because from the reports, looking at or assessing the reports, one could see that there was quite a number of issues that need or areas that need to be covered along the strategies of the R FRP. Hence, the intervention was not lifted in the same year. The EXCO approved in 2015 further extension without time bound. And the resolution was that we will only lift the intervention, uh, please lift the intervention where we see tangible results that are being yielded by the intervention. Amongst the things that have indicated in the presentation are achievements thereof talking to your audit action plan, talking to revenue enhancement, and many other issues that are reflected. Hence, it was lifted in April because the ex now felt at least by April, they could see that there was quite progress in respect of implementation of the FRP. It's another matter, honorable members, and members of the 2016 new government that was ushered in Makanda, the new council that came in in 2016 after the August elections, as to whether there was a regress in terms of its performance. But the FRP with the first term of the intervention was implemented. Uh, the Honorable Member also uh, did make reference to uh, the administrator and everything else pertaining to the remuneration of the administrator. Um, I've indicated, uh, honorable members, that uh, Ms. Yago was appointed as a first administrator when her term six months contract came to an end. The department decided to second a senior official 
to be the administrator. Of course, uh, UPEM was paid the amount of money that the honorable member made reference to. He was paid in terms of the DPSA rates. Uh, there's a, a government uh, regulated kind of uh, packages that are given to administrator or to consultants who are doing work for government at, 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 uh, at government institutions. So the DPS, DPSA rates then at the time, because she exited government as a DG of a national department, the rate was stipulated. So we paid her according to the levels or the level that she was in, and hence that uh, amount of money, which of course in the papers was reflected as exorbitant amount of money, but they were not outside what was legislated or was um, gazetted in the DPSA rate for payments of consultant at an hourly rate. Okay. Um, okay, no, what we want is, is for you, uh, we need that information within a week to tell Parliament how much exactly in monetary terms. For this period okay. of time, she yes. was paid she was paid how much in, in figures? Okay. That is what uh, we want. Okay. Okay. Yes, Thanks. Exactly. Uh, it's okay. Oh yes. Let, let's let's take the municipality in relation to the questions posed by Honorable Sileku. Honorable Chair, um, Paco again, the Executive Mayor. As I said, Chair, we, we have done everything that we can do in our power within the resources that we have, uh, financial resources that we have, to make sure that uh, we comply with all the court orders that were imposed on us. I started off by the example of the ESCOM that we tried to comply. The question of the, it's not the SUA uh, court order chairperson that we are alleged to not have complied with, but it's in respect of a landfill site where we were taken to court by Makana Unity League. Uh, this is in respect of a court order that was given to the municipality in 2015 by Justice Pickering where they said the municipality must make sure that that facility complies with about eight conditions. Um, so in 2019, Makana Unity League went back to court to say the municipality has failed to comply with that court order. In other words, it was in contempt of the court order and that that contempt was malicious and malafides, which means it was intentional. Uh, then the judge uh, in 2019 uh, agreed with that particular request to say that uh, the municipality and the mayor and the MM must be found to have been in contempt of the court order of 2015. And then, of course, the second issue that was raised by the honorable member is in respect of the decision by the court to say that uh, the uh, affidavit by the municipal manager must be sent to the Hawks or to the National Department of Prosecutions to establish whether he was not lying in court because of the dates that he presented to court, which were found not to be the correct dates. So that is what is happening, Honorable Chair. But on our side, what we have done since that court order, we have appointed, as I said, a company because we were aware that in-house, we do not have the kind of capacity to manage that facility. We appointed a company called Mkele, and that company was supposed to do all of the things that we found wanting on, and that company was giving us reports on a monthly basis. Uh, and, and my view was that uh, the reports, as we get them, our officials and, our, and the litigants must jointly look at those reports and jointly report to the court in terms of whether or not is sufficient compliance with the court order. That is what I can say, Chair, in respect of the question that was directed to the Makana municipality. Okay. All right, thank you. Let us take the the, the, the other round from honorable members. 
who have not asked questions? Who's starting? My hand is up, Chair, but I, I wanted to firstly allow committee members to, to answer. No, it's okay. Um, it's okay. You can come in. Any can come in. Honorable Nana, and who else? My hand is also up, Chair Karin Fessel. Honorable Fessel. Those are Honorable the last two Chair. Hands. Yes. Then obviously I will come in. I've got a number of uh, questions that I, I want to pose as well. Honorable, you, Honorable Nana. Who, who, who wants to speak? Uh, it's Honorable Michalakis. You can. Oh, uh, Honorable Michalakis, yes. Oh, person, you, can, you can give my two minutes to Honorable Lindy as well. Uh, I'm not no, saying. Okay. We, we <laughs> had more time. We, we decided to, to work no. very gently. When we focus in one matter, we have we spend time. We train people <laughs> properly. And we, there is no rush, rush. Uh, no questions is left un unattended to. We have our time. That is why I didn't restrict anyone to talk in terms of the minutes. I think yeah. this is the best approach of oversight so that we go to the bottom of the issues without being rushed, without you know being restricted in terms of the time. That is why we handle this way. Over to you, Honorable Nana. Well, uh, thanks very much, Chairperson. Uh, May I start by truly expressing my 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 grateful uh, my appreciation to you for for the invitation to to this meeting. As you will know, I'm I'm from the Eastern Cape, and uh, I have the interest of of, of 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 that province. Thank you very much for for the invitation, Chair. Uh, second, the chairperson. I would want to, and please, I want I want to plead for your indulgence. I might be a bit long, Chair. I want to give a a background. You know, when I heard that Umzugisun Parakwa has been elected as the mayor of Makana, when I saw him, we were in the SOPA address in Bishop in 2019, he was driving with his wife, so I immediately walked across to him and wished him well in his new, in his new appointment, because I've always known him as a person who has fought with us in the struggle against apartheid. I have known him as a person who gives it, who gives it his all when he is called to duty. But Chad, the reason why I walked across to him and wished him luck is because I knew that this time around he was up, he was up against it. For those who do not know, Mayor Mpashwa was the mayor of Makana at some point long before uh, the mess that Makana finds itself Makana finds itself in, and she is one of those people. When they left the municipality, they left it in a very good financial state. At some point, Chair, Makana municipality was regarded as a strategic municipality in the Eastern Cape. In the mid, in the in the late nineties. In 2000, Makana municipality had no less than 60 million rands in reserves in hard cash in the bank. And we all know when the rot started, but unfortunately, I will not be going to when the rot started. Suffice to say, the rot started at about 2011, after the 2011 local government elections. People from that area will know what I'm talking about. I had the pleasure, Chairperson, of serving as a councillor in Makana municipality until national and provincial elections of 2019. I was very honoured to have been invited to serve in a number of committees in, in council, including the Revenue Enhancement Committee. 
So I do have a faintest idea of what is happening with the finances of that municipality. I would want to start with the intervention of 2014. Honorable, Honorable Selegu, who per me ago was paid 20, 27,000 rand a day, and she worked for about four days in a week. She was paid 27,000 rand a day, and she worked for, for four days in a week. The total amount that she was paid after the after her six months was extended to nine months, it was just under 3.1 million. I, I I don't want to sound like the other president. You know, it, 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 little names a bit difficult for me. He she was paid just under 3.1 million for nine months. I I can bet my bottom penny, even the president of this country doesn't get that much. Now, I hear Ms. talks about remuneration this, remuneration that. My interest, because I know from good authority that Pemia or herself is not proud of what she has she achieved in Makana. More so that she herself is from Makana, Wapai, she from that she from that municipality. So she is not so proud of what she achieved. My first question to Ms. Zoom, despite everything that she's telling us about uh, remuneration this, remuneration that, what I want to know, do you think as, as, as the provincial government, you got value for money in the deployment of, 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 of Upemiago, given the amount of money that she was paid? That's the first question around Dr. Pem. The second question around Okapem, did she submit a satisfactory exit report to, to, to the department? Now talking about uh, talking about uh, revenue collection, uh, not revenue collection, fi financial recovery plan. It's true. The first one was not was not entirely implemented. In the middle of that one, a new administration came in, that financial recovery plan was dished, and a new recovery plan was 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 hashed, it was, you know, came up, and I dare say, even that one has not been implemented. Remember, I said, I also sat in an ad hoc committee that, that's, that, that sought to that sought to to address uh, financial woes of the municipality. It was a complete fast MEC. I said in that in that committee, it was a complete fast. We would be called as and when there is pressure by the previous mayor, who, who I must also mention. Uh, that the 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 people of Makana Chair are at least pleased with the current mayor because because he is responsive at least. You had a situation where a mayor, people will march to the city hall, the mayor would be in, in, in the office, and the mayor would not come out. Instead, would send an acting an acting municipal manager or somebody else, or, or send a speaker sometimes. So, so, so around who are those two questions? In Makana, Chairperson, we can talk until cows come home. With all the English that we are using here, we can talk until cows come home. There are basic things that need to be done. Ms. Uno did touch on the bloated workforce. In Makana, you have a workforce of just over 600. And yet studies show that for that municipality to, to function optimally, it requires just under 370 people. In Makana, you have 38 middle managers, deputy directors, 
I don't know their salaries, but I know their travel allowances. Each of them is getting about 8,000 rand a month in travel allowance. All of them are 38 middle managers. There was, there, was a, there was a time some of those middle managers, because they had nothing to do, they had no work, but they prefer a proof of address, you know, as a middle manager. You wish out proof of, proof of address for people who want to open, people who want to go and open uh, bank accounts and, 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 and other related stuff. Until the department addresses the elephant in the room, and I would want to solicit a comment coming from the department in this regard. We have a bloated workforce, which basically does absolutely nothing. If you go into my Twitter account, I do post some of them sleeping at about half past eight in the morning. They'll wake up under those trees uh, at about half past three in the afternoon. If you want to find them, you can go now to the pop shop by check us in Grangetown. That's where you will find municipal trucks packed. For the whole day, they are doing absolutely nothing because, the, because it is a bloated workforce. So I would really want to solicit a response from, from me soon. It's interesting that we, we are told that work is yielding some results. And the department said the situation is different from 2014. I want to say this to the department. Between 2014 and now, port holes have multiplied in Grandson in Nakan. And I will and I will leave it at that. I do not know which other Makana do they visit or, or which other Makana are they helping to get off its knees. But the Makana I know, I, I live there in the soon. The mayor will tell you, MM will tell you, I live there. I know what I'm talking about. It pains me to see a municipality that came from a strategic municipality in a province. Not so many years ago. Today it's on its knees. Today it's on its knees. And all what is required is bold action by the provincial government and 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 and, 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 and council. It's true that council is compliant. Every statutory body is in place, every statutory meeting does take place. It's true, but do rate payers get 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 comfort in statutory compliance, or they get comfort in in service delivery? There is absolutely no service delivery in Salapaya and Blade Asso. I live there. And the mayor knows I am not lying. At least they do take refuse. They do take refuse. But we're no longer given uh, refuse beds. You have a municipality. The last time, the last time I was there was, was generating just over 20 million, about 24 million a month in revenue collection. And yet it had its uh, financial commitments more than what it could generate. Simple mathematics, that means the municipality has gone bankrupt. And unfortunately, it's the blatant truth. Chair. We had and, and I would want to check if the MEC would, 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 would come in at, 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 at this stage. We had in, in Makana a, a breather when they seconded Ted Billy from the district. For the first time in many years, you saw municipal workers sweating, cleaning the streets, cleaning flowers, planting new flowers. 
for the first time in as many years. And he was taken away. Of course, he was employed by the Sarah Parmatis municipality. But from where, from when he left, things started to regress again. Chair, Uh, Mr. Makumbu says, in the opinion of the province, they have not reached the stage of dissolution. And the biggest question is to Mr. Makumbu. You are entitled to opinion, but have you have you bothered to check ratepayers in Makana? Because I can tell you. The application to dissolve council enjoys the majority of support in that municipality. Have you bothered to check as the provincial government what your voters and ratepayers are saying in this regard? Because quite, quite, quite clear to me, and in fact, we have just confirmed it, that your preoccupation as provincial government is nothing else but trying to prevent the precedence. That's why you are going uh, for an appeal. Have you bothered to lend an ear to the voters and ratepayers of Makana? Because I think their voice matters most in this regard. Not a preoccupation about precedents and, and, and assumptions. It is true, Chairperson, that sewerage in Makana leaks on a daily basis. The mayor will tell you that there is a famous sewerage leak which has been running for years. It's in Kwatata location. It's bad. People in that area, I mean, the, the sewerage stream runs literally in between people's houses. But the worst thing about it, it runs into the Kawi River. And as you will know, the Kawi River runs towards Port Alfred, and there are human beings down the, down the stream that are consuming that water. It has been running for years. So it is not true that sometimes it's, it's, it's sewer spillage. It is something that is occurring on a daily basis. I spoke to a journalist, Adrian Kalai. Adrian says to me, residents are even complaining that it's even worse during lockdown. Nobody is picking up their phones at the municipality, which is true. The municipality, Chairperson, has collapsed. If you listen to what the mayor says, he says, we have done everything in our power. In other words, it's a man who says, I have done everything humanely possible. I gave you a background of this man. I know how capable he is. But his admission shows that the municipality is fish and club. Why don't we listen to, to the calls from the people of Makana who are saying dissolve the municipality? And, and, and People's Unemployed Movement, P, uh, UPM, are poor people who are led by, by Mpana Wapot, I just forget his first name. People who are not employed, people that have given up hope, all what they want, they want to see their municipality up again. It's shameful that a, a municipality that used to, to collect revenue between 90 and 95% in a month was now sitting at 70% before COVID and during COVID it sat at 55%. We all know Chair, what needs to be done in Makana. But it requires bold action from powers that be. And one of those is to eliminate wastage in the municipality, improve revenue collection. Council of Makana, they will tell you what is my view about RAFCO in Makana. I don't see value for money because he bring, he, RAFCO brings in this much and takes off a size of the chunk. 
on all Nana, you can round up now. It's okay. I think the point is well registered. Yeah, and, so. and, 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 and thank you very much, Chair, for indulgence. And the last issue, Chair, is the implementation of, of the Kabisa report. It's not true that the Kabiso report, Kabiso report was implemented. In that report, there are people that were fingered and they were supposed to, 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 to have been charged in, 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 a, in a court of law. One acting municipal manager, Uman Disiplanga, went to press charges against those people, but those charges were brushed aside. What is the department prepared to do with the Kabiso, with the Kabiso report and, and its full implementation? Thank you very much, sir, and I apologize for being uh, too long. Thank you, Chair. No, it's okay. I, I was just saying that the, the gist and the essence of your, your message is quite clear. I think Onol Nana picks up quite a number of issues. One, to be straightforward, is there value for money? Uh, the exit report, the problems that are there, with the acknowledgement that you made, do you think it is really necessary that you must proceed with the court case? I think this is the gist of what he is saying. Uh, over to you, MEC, responses, and the municipality, of course. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Can I just make a few uh, comments? I really ac ac acknowledge uh, the contributions of Honorable Members and the concern uh, which uh, they share about uh, the challenges facing the community as it relates to uh, issues of service delivery. And uh, it's a matter that as a provincial government, we're deeply concerned Hence, our approach uh, is more a district uh, development model based a TTM approach. And uh, it is that approach, as Mr. Makunga cited, that uh, we feel that as a provincial government, uh, we are making uh, you know, every effort uh, to, 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 to resolve the challenges facing the municipality. And uh, it's not going to be an easy thing. That's why. Uh, the issue of a, a dissolution of the municipality, even if that municipality were to be dissolved today, the issue of infrastructure backlogs won't be resolved tomorrow. And therefore, it's quite important that uh, we focus more on addressing these issues, securing more resources. And therefore, um, the fact that the infrastructure, uh, you know, was meant for fewer people now, it has taken, you know, it has to take other you know, thousands and thousands of other people. There is more pressure, uh, and it is old. And uh, we are working together, including with the Department of Water and Sanitation and other departments, uh, to address these, uh, these, these challenges. One of the issues which I would want to raise with the uh, honorable members, I've taken the point raised by the chair, that we have got to submit a report that include, uh, you know, the, 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 the financial implications of the intervention is far you know, how much has been spent for the administrator and other areas, uh, you know, uh, of, uh, of, of intervention. One of the things that are important to, uh, uh, for the committee perhaps to take note of, uh, as you know, that as a provincial government, we, is one of the reasons that we, 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 we are appealing, uh, you know, uh, we're making the application, we granted the right to appeal the judgment, is that, uh, you know, there is a, what we consider to be a judicial overreach in as far as the judgment is concerned. Uh, well, our members would know that uh, the, 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 the parliament has got its own role. And if parliament fails uh, to, 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 to do its own role, other bodies can usurp what is necessary, is, is in fact the, the function uh, of parliament. In this instance, that's why we're saying that uh, if then the, the judiciary uh, directs, uh, you know, the provincial executive, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, of, of the province uh, to exercise its, its discretion, it will be an overreach. And, uh, and in the main, 
we, we thought that it's important that because this had, will have an implications, as Mr. Makung has said, not only for the province, but for the entire country. Uh, where say in rural provinces where municipalities have no revenue base uh, to, to speak with. And therefore, there are, there, there are these challenges of service delivery. And therefore, it would mean that all municipalities must be dissolved if then municipalities have, the, have these challenges. What is critical is that uh, what steps are we taking as a provincial government? And uh, we think that we have demonstrated uh, that, uh, but uh, the oral judge was not convinced uh, with the progress that uh, we have made. That's why we are taking the route uh, that says that we want to have a benefit of the full bench so that we can demonstrate the steps that we have taken. And I think that uh, the committee, if the committee at some point will, will consider, I had, I had another oral member indicating, to consider an oversight visit. Maybe some of the projects related to water, the committee will be able to, you know, to, to, to see those kind of projects and, uh, and, uh, and uh, so that convey our report and what the committee might 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 find, uh, you know, on on the ground. Uh, that's uh, uh, the the comment that uh, I, I wanted to make, uh, honourable chair. And I think that uh, the mayor, uh, we we would we, we then uh, respond on some of the issues. Okay. All right. Thank you very much, honourable uh, your worship, the mayor. <clears throat> thank you very much, chairperson, and thank you very much to the honourable members. Uh, Honorable Chairperson, can I offer to give the committee a, a proper report, written report, before the end of this week on the work that we are currently engaged with in respect of the upgrades of uh, our facilities such as the sewer, water, uh, including the landfill site? so that at least the committee has something written down in terms of what it is that is being done to address these uh, challenges. I want to offer that, Chairperson, if I may, before the end of this week to the committee. <clears throat> the second uh, issue, Chairperson, I want to take note of all of the issues that uh, Honorable Nana has raised uh, as a resident of Magana, particularly the suggestion that uh, we must eliminate the wastage that is within the municipality and improve a revenue collection. I want to uh, inform the committee that uh, in respect of improving the revenue collection, Honorable Chairperson, we have the support of uh, Kahiso Trust, who are cleaning our debt book and also who are implementing uh, revenue improvement strategies. And one of the strategies that we have uh, adopted is the debt relief scheme, Chairperson, where households that owe municipality more than uh, 180 days of debt can come to the municipality with the debt, and the municipality will automatically give that household a discount of 50%. And then the rest of the other 50%, the households can get into an arrangement to pay it back uh, to the municipality. So those are some of the strategies that we have embarked on. And of course, we are also trying our best, Chairperson, to register all the indigent uh, households so that we can apply for that money from the National Treasury uh, so that we can be able to deliver the services. So we take uh, some of those suggestions uh, we are also doing our best. Yeah. Chairperson, we, we, we are saying that we are doing all of these things because we are moving from a very uh, uh, serious situation of 2014. Uh, so it is my honest view that uh, the municipality needs support rather than needs to be uh, dissolved. Um, it needs support, Chairperson, from the province. It needs support from the district. It needs support from the national. Uh, it needs support of this NCOP committee. Because, as I said, Chairperson, there is a relatively new administration, um, which is also trying to find its feet to try and take the municipality out of the hole that it found itself in over a, over a long period of time. So, 
really, my view, uh, my honest view, Chairperson, is that uh, it's support that is needed rather than a dissolution. Because what a dissolution will do, Chairperson, is that uh, a dissolution will only bring in an administrator for 90 days and then fresh elections will come in. And then if we don't provide support even then, we will not be able to attend to address some of these issues that, that confront the municipality. So my plea would be that uh, more than anything else, it is support that is needed. Of course, we need to hold the officials accountable, and we are doing that. Um, some of the officials we are in the process of uh, suspending because consequence management, if we don't have consequence management, Jefferson, we are going to have serious problems. So we are making sure that we are holding the officials, uh, particularly the senior management, to account for ensuring that they do uh, hold the staff below them also to account. Thank you very much, Jefferson. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Honorable uh, Fessa, Karen Fessa. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, Chair, about the report that was presented to us, I just want to tell you that this is a sugar-coated report. Um, if, if only you look at what they say that the financial, the budget is, is funded and stuff like that, it doesn't make sense. After listening to Melindy and all the other speakers there that, that, that uh, contributed this afternoon, we know also that I have people living there and they report regularly about the conditions of Makana. So I, I'm in full agreement with them. But, Chair, you know that there is not one intervention that, that, ha that was successfully implemented in South Africa since the, the, the democratic um, government started. I agree with the mayor that, that, that we have to look into things like consequence management, accountability, and discipline. Discipline from political parties with regards to the councillors that, that serving in that council. We have to see that we, we get the, the, the right players that, is, that are very, very dissatisfied about the conditions. We have to get them involved in that and have meetings with them and get their buy-in so that they also understand what is going on and what is the problems of the municipality. But the municipality and the district municipality and the province must bring it must come to the party and they must also deliver. The the the, the municipal uh, the provincial government is really ne they neglected this municipality. They allowed things to happen. They allowed things to get out of line. And now when everything is in chaos, they want to say dissolve the municipality. That is not going to resolve any problems. We have to look at the, what is the problems there, identify it, take ownership from it, and the provincial legislature must, the, the Department of Kota must comply with Section 154 of the Constitution. I, th I also think that we need to, res to receive the, the Kabozo report and the latest tabled financial report of this municipality. Because I think the, fi the financial um, report that we received this afternoon is not reflecting the true finances that is going on in the report. So we will appreciate it if the mayor can see that we have these reports by the end of the week. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Honorable, uh, I don't think that the, except the fact that Honorable Karen Fraser argues that in her own experience, there is no successful story on 190, uh, section 139, and that uh, there is a need that support is all around and is comprehensive, and that the report must come as promised, uh, so that we interrogate it, because in her view, this report that was presented with the sugar coated, that is her view. <clears throat> I don't think that there's any question Sorry. Uh, that, she, that she asked. Chair, yes, or not, was it? yes? It's not my view. It's a, a report that was, sub, that was uh, presented to um, 
um, the NA last week, last week or just recently, that there is no history of any successful intervention in South Africa. It's not my view. No, it's just okay. I don't know where, where do you get it from, Honorable Fraser. Uh, I don't want us to argue about it. Uh, we, as you know, I think that the May, May, during May and June, we were engaging different provinces on Section 139, and there are a lot of lessons that we can learn. And if we are going to present the report of what we've acquired, there are about four municipalities in KwaZulu Natal that have obtained unqualified opinions based on on the report itself and. There are lots of improvement and they have been taken out of that process. But I don't think that we need to argue that because we are going to waste a lot of time. I respect what you're saying. All that I was saying here is that you say there is no successful implementation. Municipalities need total support from the province and that we need that report uh, from the municipality so that we interrogate it uh, and that we must receive it by the end of the week. I think it suffices. Uh, let's move to Honorable uh, Mikalakis. Chair, Chair, I'm, I'm sorry, Chair. Well, yes. Oh, I'm, I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Honorable Nana. Can I bring something to your attention, okay. which, which, which I'm so grateful that you also lifted out in the summary you made of of, of what I said was yes. on the issue of value for money as it relates to to the amounts paid to to that. That's very straight. Yes. Okay. Pick that point up. If it is not adequately responded to, we need uh, that response. Uh, whether there was any value for money. <clears throat> yes. Honorable Mikalakis. Uh, no, thank you, Chair. I've been uh, sufficiently covered by uh, the Honorable Mlindi. Thank you. Okay. Fine. Wonderful. Uh, just my my few comments. Firstly, let me start by saying that I'm, I'm somewhat sad about the state of the Makana, Makana municipality. About 20 years ago, this has been one of the well-known best municipalities in, in South Africa. One of its flagship programs was the, the cultural festival which was attracting a lot of investment investors, a lot of tourists across the country. And in that 20 years, as a young man, I went there, I think two or three, three times to just witness the beauty of the, of, of the city and the town and, and all, of, all of its people and the university itself, the Rhodes University. It used to be a very, very lively, wonderful, wonderful city. Today, we, we're talking about it in this context, that in 2014, it was placed under administration because of financial reasons, because of service delivery reasons, because of non-performance and all of that. And that given the contestation that people have uh, some people have taken the municipality to, to court because they want that municipality to be dissolved under Section 139 of the Constitution. And that, as all of us agree, the, the judgment is, is a very, very important judgment. It has profound implications for the municipalities because what the judge has basically done was to invoke a remedy called mandamus. Mandamus is a remedy that uh, the court applies in case that an executive authority or a public authority cannot exercise its legislative obligations. I don't know whether will this succeed or not, but it means that the judge has said, we invoke this because you fail to exercise your authority you as a provincial executive in terms of section 1391C of the constitution and we're doing it on, you, on, on your behalf. And this is a landmark judgment. Everyone is looking at it. It has implications for everybody. 
and speaks to the issue of separation of powers between different uh, arms of government. And, and, and sitting here, all of this happened in Makana is about the Makana local municipality. That is what uh, makes me somewhat very sad about about the state of affairs. And 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 and, and if people don't get services, uh, the finances of the municipalities are, are not okay. We owing a lot of creditors, uh, including ESCOM, and their complaints and issues as people raise them. It doesn't really augur as well because not only that. Gramstown or Makanda, as it is now called, was the hub of, of culture, of arts, and all of that in South Africa. But it used to be a very distinguished you know, town because of the intellectual capacity that is, that is there in the, in, the, in the town. And we, we're talking about it in the way that we do uh, today. My, my view is that there are a lot of things that needs to be done and that they need to be attended to. And we must not leave any stone unturned in terms of correcting what is what is wrong. Starting from the political leadership, starting from uh, the issues of governance that are quite problematic in many municipalities. And in this presentation, there's been an acknowledgement that uh, they came up as, as, as issues of, of serious concern. That they need to be that they need to be dealt with. Issues of service delivery are very very problematic, and they also need to be that, that they also need to be attended to. Now the question for me is, whilst these court challenges are ensuing, what do we do about addressing the issues that the municipality has got to to address, and whether the municipality itself has got the capacity? To, to address all those particular issues. For me, uh, that is a major, major concern. Now, 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 my direct question to the provincial government, where to, in, in a very positive way, in a very inspiring way, in a way that will uh, give us a sense that things are getting corrected and that this municipality would be turned around that all these bad things reported about the municipalities, about the municipality, are given the necessary attention. My question based on that is where to, in, in summarized fashion, where to from here? Where, where do we go to? How do we take the, the municipality forward? Because in your own admission, there is a, a joint team composed of different departments and, and the municipality that is working towards uh, supporting the municipality itself, that uh, the municipal uh, financial recovery plan is in place. Uh, where I see it, I don't get a sense that it is working as it should so that uh, all these problems are, are addressed. I hear the mayor saying we are owed close to 600 million rents by the by the by, by the rate payers. And if you can collect all the monies, uh, we are going to address all the challenges that are facing us. But the experience is that uh, you will not collect more than 30% of, of that that is owed to, to USA municipality. My, my point is, where to from here? Where to from here in terms of correcting the state of the municipality with all its problems and taking into consideration the issue of the courts, the issue of the team that is working there, the municipal recovery plan, the issue of the bloated structure, which is an acknowledgement that people are not working as they are supposed to, to work, the issues of discipline uh, and all of that. I just want to understand where to from, from here. Over to you. Uh, starting with the mayor, and then I'll finish with the with the uh, MEC. Over to you, Your Worship. Thank you very much, Chairperson. <clears throat> uh, Chairperson, uh, as the municipality, as I said, we 
are doing our best to turn around the municipality. And, and as we have acknowledged that uh, we're coming on from a very, very low base, if I may use that uh, context, uh, and that, this, uh, that the road is, is going to be a little bit longer and difficult to get where we are and where we want to be. Um, but we are of the view, Chair, that uh, some of the strategies that we are putting in place uh, are going to turn around the municipality. We have got a, a, a conglomeration of civil society organizations that have come together under uh, the title of Makana uh, Circle of Unity. Um, and and that, uh, that conglomerate of organizations wherein we are also participating as a municipality, there are very concrete plans of uh, economic development that are put in place. Uh, we are supported, as I said, Honorable Chair, by Kakiso Trust, and we want to acknowledge that support. Kakiso uh, Trust has adopted us as a municipality. Uh, they are putting in place some plans to turn around the municipality. They've been very successful with educational institutions. Uh, now they are venturing into the local government space, and the results are already visible when it comes to uh, revenue collection, debt relief management, and the debt book uh, corrections. So those are some of the strategies that are already being implemented. And they are also coming in, Chairperson, also inside the municipality itself. They are trying to look at what are the what are the issues that, that really make the, what, how do you change the culture? They are looking at those issues in terms of how do you change the culture that has been depicted uh, correctly by uh, Honorable Nana there. So they are working with us and we are embracing them and, and they are really supporting us. And I must also say, Chair, that uh, if it were not for the support of the provincial and the national government, uh, the municipality would have been in, been in a worse situation. And I want to cite an example of the water, uh, Chairperson, uh, uh, that I made mention of in brief in, in, in my presentation earlier. The Department of Water and Sanitation, Chairperson, has put in place a budget of more than 537 million rand to upgrade a water facility in once that facility is upgraded, Chairperson, in a year's time, it will yield 20 million liters of water per day. All we require, we require only 18 million liters of water per day. Currently, the western side of that municipality uh, is getting its water from the dams. All of those dams are dry completely. And we are relying solely on the water from the east, in other words, from this upgrade that is happening. So once that is completed, Chairperson, we will then be able to have reliable source of water uninterrupted. Of course, there are also, Chairperson, uh, aged infrastructure, which are the challenge. And with the little money that we are getting from these grants, we are upgrading some of these uh, underground pipes. For instance, we've got underground pipes that are as asbestos. Over the years, obviously, they will get worn out and the water seepage will happen. So we're busy upgrading some of them with the little money that we have. But we really need a serious financial injection, Chairperson. If you were to change around the situation here, as I said, for instance, with road infrastructure, we need more than 300 million rands uh, to upgrade all of this road infrastructure. Which you can. So, what we are trying to say, Chairperson, is that we have uh, people that we are working with. We have the support of the provincial government, but things are not going to happen overnight, Chairperson. It's going to take a much longer period um, with a lot of injection in cap financial capital and support uh, to turn around the situation in Makanda. But my honest view, Chairperson, is that uh, we have started the small steps towards improving the situation, uh, but it's not going to happen over a short period of time. That is my honest view, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you.
Uh, honorable MC. Yeah, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, I think the Executive Mayor has, has covered, uh, Honorable Chair, the things that I would, I would have loved to say. And uh, we as COCTA, we are committed to ensure that uh, uh, we intensify this work of multidisciplinary team, which is uh, constituted by the you know, uh, sector departments, as mentioned in the presentations, including uh, you know, uh, National COCTA, uh, national uh, national treasurer and uh, the, the provincial counterparts of such department at Mesa, and uh, including Amatola Water and the district municipality, and uh, we're going to intensify uh, the support to the municipality. And uh, we think that uh, with the political stability in, in in the institution having been achieved over the period, and critical vacant posts you know filled, and uh, with political stability. Uh, you know, we like it to register more progress going forward because that of the problem, uh, you know, the issues of governance that we lifted. And I think that uh, because of, uh, you know, uh, uh, the progress we've made, uh, as we indicated in the, in, the, in the presentation, there are chances of us, uh, you know, uh, making a breakthrough, particularly effective implementation of the master plan. Uh, about the issue of water treatment plant, which uh, the, uh, because they funded, uh, you know, plan uh, through, through water affairs. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do that on our project to intensify our support, and uh, we're looking forward to any guidance that we can be uh, given by the committee and uh, any advice uh, on the issue. And uh, we think, uh, you know. Uh, we're going to demonstrate more to the court, and we, we hope that, uh, uh, you know, the Honorable Court can, 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 can pay more attention on what, uh, on what we have done, you know, on the ground. And uh, we don't think that uh, there's been sufficient attention on what we have done. And, uh, and uh, I don't want to say many other things, Honorable Chair, to the committee in terms of, uh, you know, other politics that are embedded in some in some of these cases, uh, it would be it would be you know uh, misleading uh, you know for me uh, to 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 you know uh, to say to the committee these cases some of them are innocent. Uh, there are genuine issues being raised, but at the same time, uh, at the heart of those there are there are other political agendas uh, that are being pursued. And um, that's why, uh, let me say it again, that's why we, 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 we want to have a benefit of the full bench, uh, because uh, some of the things they have got to do, because all those people are local that are involved there, whether it's about the judge or it's about whoever, and therefore all local dynamics have a play more than looking at the concrete things that we have done. Uh, there's let up uh, attention being pay, pay, paid to those issues. And we want to have that benefit. Uh, of a, of a, you know of a full badge. Uh, otherwise, honourable chair, uh, thanks uh, you know uh, uh, to you at the committee. Uh, thank you very much, uh, honourable uh, MEC and uh, your worship for for the submission. Just from our side, I think there are quite a number of issues that we. We, we need to say yes uh, as a way forward. One is that we are going to request Parliament uh, to, to allow us the permission to visit the municipality uh, on an agency basis so that on our own we must go and observe what is happening, engage with all other stakeholders, uh, with a view of understanding it better, but at the same time confirming in precision what is what is happening and the presentations that are that are before us. I think it is quite important uh, that we do so. It is a matter that quite a number of uh, members have, have raised that it is important to extend the consultation and, and engagement with. Uh, all the people and the stakeholders that are that are involved, but at the same time to go and see by ourselves what is the situation. We'll do that. We'll request that permission. If we get it, we will we will visit the municipality 
in the in the nearest future. Two is that the, there are quite a number of reports that uh, we are promised. One is the exit report. They normally call it the close out report of of the administrator, so that we must gauge and assess what kind of work did the administrators do in, in Makana, both the one who worked for six months and the other one who worked uh, until April 2016, just before the election, so that we, 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 we evaluate and assess uh, those reports and to, to check the extent in which performance was obtained and how uh, improvements were, were registered in that, in that respect. We are also, the mayor promised us a report before the end of the week uh, in answering to pertinent questions which were posed about infrastructure, about uh, in infrastructure work taking place, about service delivery, about the finances, and there were two issues that Honorable uh, Sheikh raised uh, which were not answered. The, the status of the audit outcomes uh, and what do you do in terms of post-audit action plans to attend to the issues that were raised by the by the Auditor General because we cannot accept that a municipality as important and strategic as, as Makana must find itself in, in this situation that it finds itself. We, we need uh, responses on that. But we were also promised by the office of the MEC that will receive the actual amount that was paid to the administrator uh, so that we, we do not speculate. And based on that way, we will assess value for money, whether is that concomitant with, with the work that was performed uh, by, the, by the administrator and whether there was any change, any difference, any improvements. Uh, recorded as a result of the work that was done by the by the previous administrators. For us, that is quite important. Uh, our view is that the provincial government must do more and better than the current situation in terms of supporting the municipality. I'm sure if you can sit down and really identify clearly what are the bo bottlenecks and what is it and what kind of support, whether it is financial, it is human capital, it is administrative, it is even MISA in terms of infrastructure development that must be given to the to the municipality. I think uh, we need to sit down really and, and check what is it that can be done. But another area of concern is that uh, we need uh, some immediate interventions, uh, especially on the immediate problems, whether Problems are related to electricity, they are related to water, whether they are related to sewer spillages. We need to immediately find ways of, uh, of addressing those. I call them the quick wins. Uh, we need to develop an approach in which we, as part of inspiring confidence and, 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 and bringing people on board and, 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 and showing them that we, we, we are geared towards improving the situation. We need to develop some ways in which we address the immediates so that uh, so that uh, we, we continue to work as such. I, I, I also just listening to, 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 to the executive mayor, I, 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 I have a sense that we have a, a much better uh, political leader in the municipality who is geared to, towards improving the situation. Just as I listen, I was listening to, to him. I get a sense that he has grasped and grappled properly with the nature, the character, and the context of the problems that are facing the municipality. He understands the financials, what needs to be done, what are the problems, and the plans that needs to be to be put on, on, on table. I think this is what we need in terms of turning around institutions, but he will not succeed together with his council if he doesn't get the necessary support either from the provincial government, the district, as well as the national government, and everybody coming together, finding ways in which to to salvage the situation that um, the municipality finds itself finds itself in. As I said, we are going to closely monitor this this municipality, and 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 just what we have done today, 
we, in a very quiet way, we spend more time in one municipality really to go to the bottom of the problem because at the end of the day, we need to be satisfied, to satisfy ourselves, whether is these interventions working or not, and what is it that needs to be done uh, differently in order to see them to see them working, because interventions are the imperatives of the constitution. They come as a result of uh, the the provisions encapsulated in section 139 of the constitution, which which warrant a clear cut intervention by the provincial government in case that a municipality cannot fulfill its executive obligations under the constitution. We are compelled by those imperatives that if a municipality is failing to discharge its duties as per the constitution or any other laws, there must be that kind of intervention uh, to salvage the situation. And therefore, it is quite important that when we do it, we do it properly. We put up systems, structures, and processes in place to ensure that 139 works. And I will, in another platform, engage uh, 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 Honourable Officer and say, Honourable Officer, this is what I understand and this is what I see and these are my own experiences with that and that and that municipality and this is how it has turned around the situation because in, in my view it has done the fundamentals and I think that many municipalities must then learn from those smaller successful stories about Section 139 so that uh, if they do that they are also going to improve their own situation and really address all the impediments which, exhibit, which inhibit the successful implementation of Section 139. But we as the uh, NCOP must play our part because one of the major concerns is that we do not make the necessary follow-ups to those municipalities. And that is why some of them, they are placed under administration. Uh, there are no improvements and there, there are no post-139 um, interventions and ways of supporting municipalities that are just coming out of Section 139. And those are some of the lessons that we're picking up. And I think, in my view, uh, we need to address those issues so that at the end of the day, they <clears throat> they are addressed. I think with that, I, I, I think we've come to the end of the, of the meeting. Uh, thank everybody who attended uh, this meeting, especially our guests from the Eastern Cape province, uh, the, the province of the legends, as it is called, uh, specifically the, the, the Honorable MEC for taking time to, to, to share with us the information about Makana and what is it that you're doing as a department. Together with your team, we, we heartily thank you for attending this meeting. We also thank the municipality, uh, the executive mayor. And I think with our support, all of us, I think you can do more to turn around the municipality and to make uh, this municipality a shining example to be back to where, to where it was before. And thank you very much for you, together with your team that uh, you, you grace this uh, important meeting. Uh, on that note, honorable members, uh, thank you very much. As I indicated, we made a submission. Uh, we will communicate in, in this coming week about what is going to happen next week. Uh, on Tuesday, it's going to be our normal committee day to finalize the issues on of the Northwest, uh, because that is one outstanding municipality in terms of Section 139. And out of that, we will compose a report a consolidated report about all the municipalities in the in the country in respect of uh, Section 139. We are left with North, Northwest only. And then we are going to also, in that meeting, receive that outstanding report about the 134 million missing from uh, the Bojanala District Municipality. If you remember, in February, we, we did engage the province and the and the district municipality on that 134 million rands. We said we'll call them uh, with time, and I think uh, we, we we want them here next week, Tuesday, so that we engage that uh, province around those particular issues. And as I indicated, if we get the approval, uh, we are going to go to Mpumalanga next week as part of oversight 
and find ways of visiting uh, the home of uh, the late uh, Honorable Mola Pinjile Mola, who was uh, a member of this particular committee. As a committee, as part of that oversight work, we'll find an hour or so to visit the family uh, to properly pay our respects uh, to that to that family. I think that is what we need to do uh, as part of humanity and, and all of that. With that, uh, honorable members, uh, thank you very much for attending this meeting. Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you very you. much, Chair. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Thank <laughs> you. 